today we're going to talk about the middle class. What is the middle class? What constitutes the middle class? Are you in the middle class? Or are you out of the middle class? And what it takes by the hustler kung fu methodology to truly be middle class. Not wealthy, not rich, but just middle class. I got some information that's going to be very powerful. It's going to help you understand some things like you never understood it before. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to stay to the end of the video so I can teach you how to get your free t-shirt. So let's start this off with a story. As you can see, I'm in a new vehicle, and if you follow me on Instagram at Hustlers Kung Fu, you'll see that I still have Monty. Now, I have two cars that have paid off. Now, this isn't the brag or boast. This car is actually in the company's name. I bought it in the company name, paid with it for a company check. The guy that I bought the car from said this, was just amazed. He said, you're the second person in not two years, not three years, not five years, not seven years, but 11, almost 12 years to pay cash for a car of this level. And I was like, really? Yeah, really. Then he started opening up, he started telling me all kinds of stuff about his business and everything, and things that I can probably get from him later. Also have Monty, which is paid off. I mentioned the cars because there are really three things that kill people's income. The mortgage or apartment, the car payment, and child support or child care cost. Those three things take up mostly 30 to 50% of a person's check. Either a few of them or all three of them. If you are purportedly middle class and you do not own your car outright, you are not middle class. I know that's gonna piss off a lot of people, but you're not middle class because you have an employee mindset, you have a paycheck mindset, you have a payment mindset, you do not have an asset classification building mindset. One of the first rules of investing is not to lose money. When you pay cash for things, you do not pay interest. You don't pay little interest, 0%. You pay no interest, so therefore you can't lose. Now, another litmus test to are you in the middle class, regardless of your income, do you have $50,000 worth of assets? If you don't, you're not middle class. Assets, and th this is something, you know, we can go back to my video with Farmer Brown. A farmer can have millions of dollars worth of asset. He has high, he has income producing assets, but not exactly high income. And having assets is way more important than a high income. But if you are an employee mindset person, if you're a paycheck person, if you are a payment person, and I'll break that down about the payment person, you are going to be in a world of hurt because you're losing 20 to 30% of your after-tax income in some type of fee. And that's another reason it's so hard for you to get ahead. Another litmus test, and this is a big one. This is really big. Do you have student loan debt? You cannot bankrupt out of student loan debt. You cannot you can't, you can't get rid of it. It's gonna follow you or your parents if they co-signed on the dotted line, grave in the death survivor benefit package. Guess what, those student loans gonna take that too. So if you got student loans, regardless of your income, you're not middle class. This is the trickeration of done to create middle class. If you're educated, you're middle class, regardless of your income. Now it used to be Education was not that big of a thing in America. It was nice to have, seriously. The, you know, if you were a farmer and you wanted your son to be educated, you send him to school, he gets a little education. And that was, that was nice to have. It was the grooming process. It was called finishing school. It wasn't like your first option. Because the thing is, before you went to finish your school, you had to make some money. You had to have some assets, which is Farmer Brown, the Kings, the Queens, all of that. 70% of America is not middle class. Do you have two to $10,000 cash in the checking account? Not your 401k, not some type of investment, but just straight cash sitting there. If you don't have two to $10,000 cash, you're not middle class. Now, let's walk through some of these things. Let's say you make $50,000 a year and you own your car outright. That literally saves you you're still gonna have to pay car insurance and you're still gonna have to buy gas, but your car payments are gonna be 450-ish to 700 bucks. That's where most people are with car payments. Simply having a car that is paid off, 
you're saving $450 to $700. Let's split the difference at $600. bucks. $7,200 a year, $7,200 a year back in your pocket. That could start a business. All right, so let's say you make $30,000 a year. You have two cars that you have paid cash for, and you own a house. That person with the two cars who owns their house outright, who are making 30 grand a year, is wealthier than the person who has none of that and makes 125K a year. Mind blowing stuff, isn't it? What the trickeration has done, the powers that be, has got y'all gassed up that a high income makes you middle class. A high income does not make you middle class for the simple fact that once that high income changes, usually it's gonna go down. You're no longer able to keep up with the payments. You can't keep up with the payments. You will plunge into poverty quicker than you ever thought. Now, I believe, and this is what I'm doing with my money, and this is the money moves I'm making, that we are in for the recession of recessions. And one of the reasons that I'm paying cash for everything, let's say I, you know, because someone wants, a lot of people like to quote me, but they don't like to really do the full quotation because they have a basic understanding that someone put in the comments like, hey, you know, I thought everything was going to be a fire sale. You're going to wait. Uh, this is an X, this is an X5M. It's red. It's extremely rare. They, they're not going to get that cheap. Not to mention they're hard to find. So, once again, Monty is a 2004 Audi S4, a Mola Yellow. They're hard to find. You know what the blue book is on an Audi S4 2004? It's like three to four grand. Maybe five. I can get 12 because it's rare. One of my buying paradigms is to buy stuff new name brand and to get it at a discount when I buy it. So if I have to sell it later, I don't lose any money. That's just one of the things I have my life designed around. How do you get out of this mess that keeps you from being middle class? Because you could be making 150,000 bucks a year and you can still be poor. Because this is one of the things that has shifted. The six figure salary was amazing in the 80s. You're making six figures in the 80s, that's like three to 400 grand today. You gotta readjust your numbers. You don't wanna make 50,000. At a minimum, you wanna make 80 to 125. At a minimum, the one of the best ways to do that is to start your own business. I'll have some information for you about that later. So you want to come in at a higher level. The second thing you want to do is realize your financial position. If you're making 50 grand a year, you cannot afford a $20,000 or $30,000 car on payments. You can't afford it. The car dealerships, the banks and everything that's like, well, yes, you can. Your, your FICO score is 750. You can afford it, but from a money standpoint, you can't. So you can't go off of your FICO score. You've got to go off of your money score. You make it 50, mm -mm. you need to get you a get out and push, a point A to point B car. If you're making 75, you have a little wiggle room, but once again, you still need to get a car that's appropriate for your budget because cars keep people poor. You look good now, but you'll be poor later. So that's one thing you need to do. Second thing you need to do, and this is gonna be really, really hard for a lot of you. And it's gonna be kind of conflicting because, it will be conflicting, because if you're a man, and I've said it, you need to have your own place. However, if you are working on being financially independent, you might be better off with one, two, or three roommates. Even if you can afford to live on your own, have the car that's paid off, or living with people, so that those two moves right there, could literally put $600 to $1,800 a month back in your pocket for business development. You want to escape poverty or escape the precipice of poverty because there are people making 150, 200 grand and they are a few paychecks from disaster because it's a financial card game of all of these payments. Like with me, I've actually had to go through, audit my finances and get rid of a lot of payments because I had like $350 a month coming out for stuff I really wasn't using. So I just like, hey, cancel this, move on, cut it out. And I could let that $350 go and it's not gonna hurt me, but it's financially irresponsible. One of the things that I should say is if you 
are fortunate enough to make good money, you need to be a good steward over that money. And I'm not trying to get preachy or biblical, it's just, here's the thing about money. When you treat the money that you have coming in well, it treats you well and you get more. So from that standpoint, you want to be a good steward of your money and you might need to do some extreme couponing stuff short term, not like for the rest of your life, a year or two, just to get that foundation, just to get that basic grip together. You have the facade of middle class. You have many of these college students who graduated with 3.8, 4.9s, 5.0s, whatever. They think they're middle class as they go into the room that they were staying in to go to sleep at night that they grew up in because they're living with the rents. They're living with the mom, they're living with the dads. They can't afford to live on their own. And let's talk about the student loan debt. I got a student, I'm gonna give him out a shout out. Jacob's got this channel, Jacob in Vegas, check him out. Jacob in four years has retired like $70,000 in student loans. And he's still got 50 and he's working on it. I'm gonna tell you, he's a young guy doing the right thing because those things will haunt you forever. You get in arrears, then the interest, it just explodes on you. So you got to handle your student loans. And I'm going to say this, if you got 30,000 worth of student loans, you got 40, 50, 60, 70,000, what you need to do is create a hustle or a side business and all of that money goes straight to those student loans. Like I'll talk about a little bit of hustle camp because here's one of the reasons that so many people fall in harm's way. They don't have a budget, not a nothing, no budget, just, they just out here spending money and making money. You, if you are making a million dollars a month, you need a budget. This is how people who are making three million a year, 10 million a year, end up owing 30, 40 million because they don't have a budget. They're, they have these appetites that are insatiable. And next thing you know, they, they got the million dollar mansion, but they got like a 20, 20, $30,000 $30, per month mortgage. They got the Maybach, they have the Bentley, and all the stuff's on payment. So they got literally $140,000, $150,000 a month in payments where if they just slow down and pay cash, they can still get the stuff within a year. But no, the car man said, I can get this now because my FICO score is 780 and I got 20 Gs to put down. So I'm going to get this. Glendon, I'm going to get this. I can do this. I got this. Five years later, living in the projects with his mom. Money is, money comes and goes, but this is one of the things that I've noticed that once again, when you treat your money well, you can stack money in good times or bad. You have to be in that position. But so many people are not part of the middle class. They're not, they're, uh, it's the facade of the middle class. They look like the middle class, they spend like the middle class, but when you pull back the financial curtain and look at the numbers, they are poor as church mice. And it doesn't have to be that way. But it is that way because people cannot enjoy life without immediate gratification. So with immediate gratification, it creates this situation of thirst, desire, and it is sad. Now, let's talk about some ways for you to go from broke dick Danny, leave penniless Priscilla Lane alone. First thing you gotta do, is balance out. You've got to get a budget. You've got to know what your numbers are. I don't care if you're making 850 an hour. You need to optimize that 850 an hour and get rid of everything that you can't afford. You might need to get Cricket versus Verizon. When I wrote my first book, I got rid of Verizon. Myself a Metro PCS phone that was 40 bucks a month. I wasn't doing storage auctions. I wasn't doing all stuff. I didn't need the internet. I just needed a phone. So number one, you've got to you know, bear down, balance out, get that stuff together. Then number two, and this is something that's gonna be a little challenging, you have got to figure out a way to make extra money, not replace your job, to make extra money. If your situation is you're making 50, 60,000 dollars a year, you make an extra 15 grand a year, that's life changing. And the money, the extra money must have a purpose. It should not go into 
increasing your lifestyle. That is another thing that kills people, lifestyle creep. And I know you're going like, well, Glendon, you're driving that fancy new BMW, but I'm like, it's paid for, man. I saved up for it. I had a special account and I put money in there every month, every month. And when I was like, I actually forgot because I was out looking and I was like, oh, dang, I got more than enough to get that. I got that and I can have money left over because I saved up for it. I was telling the client, it's like something I want, but I could get it on credit and I don't want to move money from something else. So I'm just going to save up for it and wait. Boom. Here it is. Make more money. Now, this is gonna be something else that's gonna be very hard to digest, so brace yourself. Go to my video, how to start a service business. Start a car wash, start a power pressure washing service. These are clearly things you're not gonna wanna do because they're not your passion. You know, they don't edify you. They're, they're not taking you to this um, wonderful place in life, right? You, you're not feeling special and no one's like, it's not edifying work. And I'm gonna tell you something. Many people are looking for work with purpose versus putting purpose into work. When I used to work in these warehouses, I would turn it into a game. And I would like, how can I do this more efficiently? And people noticed this. I remember I was tasked this one time to sweep up this huge warehouse. They were vacating the warehouse, there was stuff there. I was like, okay, how am I gonna do this? So what I did, no one told me to do this. I went out, I found the hose, and I just wetted up the warehouse to keep the dust down, right? So I did all that. Then, you know, I, you know, just enough to wet it and not to get it soaking and stuff like that. I wasn't trying to clean the warehouse with the water. I was just trying to create enough water on the stuff there so the dust wouldn't choke me because there had been two people there and they just started sweeping it up and I don't know God knows what this stuff was and they it has just got so bad that they just walked off because the stuff would hang up in the air and then I slowly swept the floor with purpose I didn't go fast as I could I just went slow slow no dust whatsoever none and I had these rolls and I, I would put together a pile then what I would do is I would bring the trash can to the pile and put it in there. And one of the guys who was who was a permanent there, he watched and he told me this. He said, I don't know who you are, but someday you're gonna be running your own company because you do stuff like systems and processes. You can put purpose into anything. Uh, when I used to cut grass, uh, well, Sally Mae Jones, Miss Jones, rest in peace, would be on me because if there was a blade of grass up she would like not pay me and she's like you need to go handle that handle that handle that handle that so i would go out there and it came to a point that i became obsessed with cutting grass i would like and one of the ways that i learned how to get around you know straggles i would cut the rows shorter i wouldn't like go to the width of the lawnmower i'll leave like that much right i wouldn't have these stragglers and i wouldn't have this stuff you can put purpose in any work but many of you are looking for work that has purpose, something that excites you, something that turns your soul on. Well, if you're a broke dick Danny, if you're a penniless Priscilla, you don't have that kind of time. You don't have those options. That's why I say this video is gonna piss a lot of you off because you need to get yourself a good service business or something while your dream business is supported or you get the money or the the right tools for this kind of business. Because this is one of the things that kills so many people. They want to do something significant while having a mediocre mindset. And it's just never gonna work. So that's just some of the things that you can do because once again, most of you are not middle class. You're not, I don't care what your paycheck says, I don't care what kind of nice house you have because the minute that paycheck stops, it's all gone. You might be able to go four months, you might be able to go six months. After that, if you don't get a job and start paying some bills, they come to take stuff. They'll kick you out your house. They're gonna come hook up a tow truck to your car and snatch it in the middle of the night. And you're gonna go out there, you don't have no car. Because the thing is, you've never owned a car. 
You never owned the car. You were leasing the car. Until that final payment comes through, you don't own that car. And I don't think a lot of people really get that. And that is a very important thing about ownership. Because a lot of millennials are doing this. I don't want to own anything. I'm going to live in the van. I'm going to travel. What they're doing is avoiding responsibility. Because success is responsibility. Owning stuff is responsibility. These are inherent in the DNA. And the longer that you put off owning stuff and building assets the worst this thing is going to be for you it's going to be horrible it's going to be terrible because if you just have quote money and you have no assets you have nothing that you own it's going to be very dark for you how do we get out of this how do we get out of this i'm going to give you the free version and i'm going to give you my version all right so one of the things you should do and this is if you have no clue to what you want to do. Go below the video. Contact Patty. Go to my bookstore. Find one of the $10 books. Give me your number. And then let Patty, you know, tell Patty you want this book. You only get one book. And read that book five, ten times. Because you give me your number. You, you go ahead and find the book. It's, it's free. You know, we won't charge you. So that's the free way. That's what I'm going to do. There's like 16 different books. You only get one, so pick carefully, and we will hook you up. Now, if you want an accelerated version of this... So this is Hustle Camp. Let me drop it for you. Hustle Camp is Hustler Kung Fu University under a different name. And it's not one course. It is several courses. And let me show them to you. Going down, going down. Disruptive Money Personal, How to Never Be Broke Again, the $25 Hustle. I will teach you to make money live webinars, 10 essential steps to hustling, becoming the boss, and the Craigslist Marketing Course. I am still working on this. This is not available. This is done. This is a great course. This really is worth the price of admission. 30 Days 2500 Original Course. I'm working on Fat Cat Secrets. I'm working on this. This is done. The Child Support Course is done. Uh, that will come later. Disruptive Mating. That's done. Fat Cat Secrets. Parental Contracts, LLCs, and Trusts is about 50, 60% done. This is coming. This is coming. I'm working on that. That's done. This book is the bomb. Now, currently in the year of our Lord, until November 3rd, November 3rd, 2017, this course can be had for $1,500. And all the courses that are go with it, plus you'll get T-shirts, plus you'll get boot camps. And if I have a live training here in Atlanta, you can come to the office and use your Hustlers Kung Fu or your Hustle Camp live stream key. Essentially, you just show up. You know, we, we'll verify you, make sure that you signed up, you paid for it. So whatever live event I put on, you can come, which means I'm going to be limiting that and I'm going to separate that because I learned some stuff. But for you, 1500 bucks, you go under the video. There'll be a link and you can pay that, and then Patty, my assistant, will set you up. Please give us 28 to 48 hours, sometimes on the weekends. You know, it takes a little while. And that is how you get that. Now, let's talk about these T-shirts. What I want you to do is subscribe to the channel. And what I want you to do is go below the video. Give me your number. Go to this SMS notification list. Get your number, and when you sign up on that notification page wait you're going to get a text and hit yes so you'll be confirmed and then come back and subscribe to the channel if you've not subscribed and then leave a comment on this video or any video and every day or let's say i do a bunch of uh regular videos i may let them stack up for every video that i do i am going to give away a t-shirt to the best comment 
Yes, you can comment more than once, but the comments need to be sensible and same like, yo, you're not going to win it if you just put yo. OK. All right. Well, that's it. Hopefully you are thrilled and be sure to subscribe. Be sure to give me your number and be sure to come back and leave a great comment.